Today I'm going to show you one of the easier DIY activities, which is replacing the rear shocks on my 2006 Chevy Silverado. First thing, as always, is using some penetrant spray on nuts and bolts. I do this whether it's working on suspension or exhaust. This type of equipment is always exposed to the elements, you know, whether that's rain or mud or snow, and it's always building up rust, corrosion, and dirt. So the penetrant spray will make your life a lot easier when it comes to working on these types of nuts and bolts. While I'm doing this, remember to help me out and hit the like button if you find this video helpful at the end of it. Leave a suggestion for feedback or a question, and as always, subscribe for more DIY and tool review and trailer videos. Alright, now I'd like to introduce you to what I call the bolt from hell. Man, this one was actually really, really tough, and this probably took as much time as the, the rest of the job did. I had a really tough time breaking this free. I used penetrant fluid, the impact, uh, finally broke free the nut with a breaker bar here. So you'll see it, uh, I get it loosened up here, which is awesome. And so after that, I'm going to remove the nut. But uh, interestingly, the bolt itself doesn't just pop out in my case. In my case, after the nut is removed, this bolt and the threads were holding on inside the shock absorber. I swear to God, the, the rust, the corrosion, the threads were holding on, holding on for dear life. So here I'm doing a bit more hammering. I tried the impact, got the breaker bar going, and it's really spongy, right? So as I'm pulling this down, it's springing back. I'm pulling it, it's springing. I'm going to do a bit more hammering, and then I'll do a, a bit more with the breaker bar. And really, it's just really spongy and squishy inside. And it's fighting me the entire way. So here I'm going to use a wrench. And uh, I will see if my luck works out. Nope. So let's do some more penetrant spray. Cover up those bolts. Uh, cover up that bolt. Hit it with the impact again. Maybe do some more hammering. Let's do some impacting and hammering. Maybe some more hammering. So this keeps going on for a little while. i got the screwdriver now while I'm trying to... I'm trying to apply leverage so I can back on the bolt while I am hitting it with the impact. Here I am with a trusty half inch wrench or ratchet and it is squeaking every step of the way. Here I'm trying another impact. I'm hitting it with the Milwaukee 3 8 while I'm trying to pull it with the screwdriver and here let's add a bit more penetrant spray. We'll keep going at this. This bolt and this penetrant spray are like my best friend. So let's do a bit more hammering as well. Heck, you know what, let's hammer the shock absorber too. So here it goes. It's, it's definitely coming loose over time here, but it's squeaking and it's spongy and it's squishy every step of the way, but you can see I'm making progress. The trusty half inch ratchet is just making its way. Good old elbow grease. Unfortunately, the power tools were not that helpful this time around, but here we go. We're almost free. It's just holding on for dear life. The battle has continued for quite some time at this point. But here, it's almost out. I just need a bit more to get it out. And finally, the bolt from hell is dead. Actually, I ended up reusing it. Now, the top bolt was not nearly as difficult. This one broke free quite easily. And then I hit it with the impact and was able to remove the nut and the bolt pretty easily. Remove the nut and then the bolt just basically slid out. And after that, I removed the old shock absorber. After getting a face full of you know dirt and rust. Anyway, here's the old shock absorber. There's the new one. That's how it comes. So I'm gonna cut it open, and as soon as I do that, it's going to expand. So you don't know how long this has been sitting on a shelf or in a warehouse, so it's good to cycle the shocks. I do it about five or six times before installing it uh, on the truck. So that just basically means you compress the shock and then you let it expand on its own, then you compress it again let it expand on its own, and again, do that a few times before you end up installing it on the truck. So now I'm installing the new shock absorber here. Just get the top started off, get the bolt in there, and the nut attached. Once I do that, I'm basically just gonna use the impact, tighten it up initially, not too tight, but tight enough that it doesn't go anywhere. And to do the bottom, I'm using the floor jack to help me out. It's basically gonna hold the shock absorber in place while I bolt it up. So here I've got it basically level. I'm going to stick a screwdriver in there just to get the hole lined up. Once I'm satisfied with that, then 
Let's take the bolted initially. Give it a few love taps just to get it in place. And once I'm satisfied with that, I'm going to drop the floor jack, get it out of the way. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering why my two and a half pound mallet or hammer has that green cloth, it's I wrap it in there. I do a lot of hammering in my garage, and I don't want to completely make my neighbors hate me, so a lot of the hammering is muffled by that green cloth. So here I am tightening up the top bolt. I lent up my torque wrench. It should be 75 foot-pounds, but I basically use my long handle 3 8 ratchet, and when I do it tightly, things usually end up around 80 foot-pounds. So that's what I'm going with. Tighten up the bottom as well. Again, it should be 75 foot-pounds. So here is the other side. I'm just going to show you this quickly. This stuff, the other side and every other bolt came off so much easier. Life should always be that simple, but it just uh, that first bolt was the bolt from hell. I'm glad it was the first one. Here's the finished product. Rear shock is in place and all tightened up, ready to go.